Hey, I'm Rachel Abbott, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily podcast. Coming up, calls for more inclusive emojis with black and mixed race hairstyles. But first... A travel warning has been issued for Rwanda after an outbreak of a highly contagious virus known as the Marburg virus. So the Marburg virus is a very serious virus that kills up to 88% of people who contract it. Victims develop a very serious fever and some even bleed from the eyes before their death. That's our health reporter Dan Keane. It starts out like a harmless flu with a fever, headache and, and muscle pains and within days those very serious symptoms like excessive bleeding start to develop. Rwanda says eight people have died so far from Marburg virus, just days after the country declared an outbreak of the deadly hemorrhagic fever that has no authorised vaccine or treatment. So far, 26 cases have been confirmed. We haven't had any cases in the UK, but it can be imported, usually from Africa. Yesterday, the 2nd of October, a station platform was cordoned off at Hamburg Central Station in Germany over concerns that a train passenger may have arrived carrying the dangerous virus. So this outbreak in Germany um, began yesterday uh, when officers cordoned off Hamburg Central Station uh, for several hours, very important. It originated in two travellers, so a medical student and his girlfriend who were on a high-speed train that had arrived from Frankfurt and they'd started to show symptoms. The medical student had arrived by plane from Rwanda and he had been in contact with an infected patient in Rwanda. Like Ebola, the Marburg virus originates in fruit bats and spreads between people through close contact with the bodily fluids of infected individuals or with surfaces. People should be concerned about the possibility that this virus has spread in Europe But it's very important to note that we don't have a laboratory confirmed case. Um, They will need to go and do testing. This patient, unfortunately, did develop all the symptoms that are consistent with Marburg. But until we know that that is definitely what they have, uh, we shouldn't panic yet. And also, you know, trust that that health authorities in in Germany will be able to contain this um, and, and in Rwanda as well. Next, an astronomer based in Belfast is teaming up with the European Space Agency to take part in their first planetary defence. According to ESA, the mission called HERA will be humankind's first probe to rendezvous with a binary asteroid system and will be Europe's flagship planetary defender. Professor Alan Fitzsimmons from the Astrophysics Research Centre at Queen's University Belfast will be at ground control at the European Space Operations Centre in Germany and has been helping ESA plan this mission for decades. HERA will perform a detailed post-impact survey of the target asteroid, Dimorphos, the orbiting moonlet of a binary asteroid system known as Didymos. HERA's launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket is due to happen later this month, but the exact date has yet to be announced. However, the rendezvous target is December 2026. Now, NHS England is to screen around 100,000 babies for more than 200 genetic conditions as part of new world-leading research. Here's our health reporter Dan Keane again to explain more. So hundreds of babies have started testing for over 200 rare genetic conditions. And this is part of a study by NHS hospitals that's aiming to screen up to 100,000 babies. And what they hope to do is identify some very rare genetic conditions in in babies before they develop it. The generation study led by Genomics England in partnership with NHS England will see newborn babies offered whole genome sequencing using their blood samples, which are usually taken from the umbilical cord shortly after birth. This could allow them to benefit from earlier diagnosis and hopefully slow the progression of, of that disease. One of the problems with genetic diseases are sometimes they don't develop until later in life and they're very difficult to treat. As part of recruitment for the study, pregnant women and their partners are being told about the research during routine checks and invited to take part. If they choose to, an NHS doctor, nurse or midwife confirms at the time of birth they are happy to proceed and then a blood sample is collected and sent to a laboratory for sequencing. Parents are given the results of the test within 28 days if a condition is suspected or within a few months if no problems are picked up. 
It's hugely significant, potentially, if, if uh, you know, the, the results are positive and, and they're able to put together a really solid um, bit of data here. We need evidence on, on whether this kind of genomic screening could, should be offered to, to all children. Because if it, if it is, then, you know, children that suffer from, from really awful illnesses that, that impact their, the rest of their lives um, could be treated earlier. To, to, you know, to go through some, some difficult treatment, usually their life expectancy is, is affected and the, their quality of life is hugely negatively impacted. So really, you know, these children deserve better. And if we can pull this off, then it'll be really positive. Let's go to the ads coming up in part two, calls for more inclusive emojis and why dolphins love a bit of fun. See you back here in just a minute. Welcome back. A community group is calling for more inclusive emojis with black and mixed race hairstyles to be released. Rise365 carried out research that found that despite there being 3,782 emojis, not a single one features a black or mixed race hairstyle, leaving a third of young black and mixed race people feeling overlooked and forgotten. People think that having your hair out is often, it makes you look untamed or unprofessional. So I feel like changing that stereotype is important. Rise365 is calling for four new emojis to be added to the Unicode list of emoji characters. They feature hairstyles such as afro, braids, cornrows and locks. And the characters have been designed by young people the group supports. Oh, to create an emoji, um, it makes you feel empowered. It makes you feel powerful as they're like everyday symbols that we use. We can relate to that emoji. It gives us an expression, it gives us a way to express ourselves in different ways. Clips there courtesy of ACP Network. And finally, turns out it's not just us humans who enjoy having a bit of fun. Because scientists have discovered that dolphins actually smile during play. Research carried out by the University of Pisa in Italy found bottlenose dolphins have an open mouth expression that they use to communicate with each other during play, much like a smile in humans. The animals are known to be very playful and have often been observed playing with objects and chasing each other. In the study, when the creatures beamed at their playmates, they received a similar response 33% of the time. The relaxed open mouth, seen in social carnivores, monkeys' play faces, and even human laughter, is a universal sign of playfulness, helping animals and us signal fun and avoid conflict. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Standard podcast. For all the latest news, head to standard.co.uk. Tech and Science Daily will be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.